Welcome to Rain and Rambles. It's like Rolling Rambles, but a lot wetter. And for some reason, the brightness is insane right now. This guy doesn't have his headlights on, and it's not a very safe situation. Uh, yeah, your headlights aren't on, dude. Well, he's got DRLs, that's why. Anyway, enough bitching about other drivers. I haven't even started the thing yet. Oh, let's have a little discussion about the time that I learned some hard truths about how the world and specifically banking and insurance works. I was 18 when I got my first vehicle. I had a really nice big black truck. It wasn't amazing. It wasn't like some big fancy Dodge Ram with 30 inch rims or something. It was a meager truck, a, a compact pickup, although bigger than some other compact pickups. And I loved my truck. And I drove my truck everywhere because I didn't have any other vehicle. What, I mean, what, what else am I gonna drive, you know? It's kind of stupid. So, because I only have one vehicle, uh, I drove that one vehicle everywhere. And I did so for quite some time until I couldn't anymore. Why couldn't I? Because despite having it for several years and having a few scrapes as any 18, 19, 20-ish year old would, I actually don't remember the exact year this happened, but um, I, either 20, 21, it was, it was in the vicinity of my 21st birthday that a lady in a Chevy Venture minivan, an old lady, turned left in front of me on a 55 mile an hour rural highway and there was nothing I could do. Absolutely nothing. I had to slam on the brakes, but two wheel drive truck, um, 90s model, no anti-lock brakes, so, and, and they weigh nothing in the back. There was no purchase and even if there was, even though at the time I wasn't even going the speed limit yet, um, she turned left and I couldn't do anything and she didn't turn fast enough to get out of the way. So even though I slammed the brakes, I creamed her dead in the side. And the insurance paid several thousand dollars, but the insurance didn't pay for everything. I had to have full insurance, which meant if anything bad happened to the car, I was to be made whole by my own insurance. The problem is what makes you whole and reality are not the same thing because the comprehensive coverage, um, you know, and the liability from the other person, this, this does not actually make you whole. In fact, that's one of the great lies about car insurance is that, uh, or any insurance really, is that they won't make you whole. They don't care about making you whole. They want to pay out as little as humanly possible. And there's a very finely tuned legal system backing this way of paying out as little as possible. So the insurance covered the value of my vehicle at the time of the crash, which was several thousand dollars, but I had a loan for that vehicle. And the problem is that the value of the vehicle was lower than, or at least the value that the insurance was willing to pay me for was lower than the loan, and it probably was lower anyway, because I got it from one of those dealerships that um, they're pretty well known, and they they frankly cost too damn much. <clears throat> I've not gone back there since uh, I bought a couple more cars from there, but I learned my lesson eventually and stopped going back. The difference between how much your vehicle's worth and how much you owe on a loan is called a gap, and they sell a special kind of insurance that no one told me existed called gap insurance. Gap insurance covers the difference between the loan and the actual value of the vehicle when you have a crash. If you don't have gap insurance, then insurance will pay out the value of the vehicle on the market as according to the books they've cooked, but they're not gonna pay out everything, which means you're stuck holding several thousand dollars of debt on a vehicle you no longer own potentially through no fault of your own, and that's exactly where I found myself. I owed, um, after insurance, I owed a couple thousand more dollars. And then, 
uh, I was uh, at, a, at a bit of a bit of an impasse because <clears throat> what am I supposed to do? Now I have no vehicle, and at the time I was delivering pizza for Pizza Hut, so I have no vehicle. How am I supposed to deliver these stupid pizzas if I have no vehicle doing it? How am I supposed to go to work across town if I have no vehicle with which to even get to my job? It is a bit of a conundrum, isn't it? How am I supposed to do my job if I have no vehicle with which to get there, no vehicle with which to do the job requiring a vehicle? Um, it's a bad situation. Fortunately, um, less than a year prior, my dad had given me a car that became sort of an out for this problem. Um, I got a Chevy Beretta stick shift, my first stick shift vehicle. He just gave it to me. He gave it to me because someone had sold it to him piss cheap, <clears throat> and at some point the reverse shifter stopped working. The, inside a manual transmission there are forks that move back and forth, and the shifter forks kind of determine uh, where each of the gears slides to inside the transmission so that you can change the gearing, thus how a manual transmission works. But one of the forks that moves to push everything into reverse didn't work anymore. Which meant the transmission would have to be repaired. Which means rebuilding the transmission. So my dad gave me a car that could not back up. If I was to go forward into a place that I couldn't reverse out of, I was stuck. I actually delivered pizza. In this, in this car a couple of times. I delivered pizza in this Beretta that couldn't back up. Um, most of the time what I would do if I did have to do some backing up is I would park somewhere level. I would open the door and I would Fred Flintstone push the car backwards using my left leg. Yes, this is actually a thing that you can do in a car. And it was a heavier car than the one I'm driving now, so not by a whole lot, but it's not exactly a lightweight car. It is a, a two-door, <clears throat> it is a, a two-door, uh, like, 90s car, like, early 90s car. It, it's not the lightest thing in the world. Definitely, um, it definitely had some weight to it, and it, it definitely uh, gave me a little leg workout. Anyway, I was also lighter, which meant I didn't have to push myself quite as much, but... I Fred Flintstone this car a couple times, and um, what I ended up having to do was go to the credit union that I was a member of and take out a $3,000 personal loan, which paid off the, uh, the auto loan and paid a transmission shop to rebuild my transmission so that I would have reverse again. That cost $1,500, I think, uh, something like that. Uh, it, was, it was expensive, and given this is like mid-2000s-ish money, <clears throat> $1,500 is, well, it, it was not a small amount of money, but it was way cheaper than getting another vehicle. I already owned this thing free and clear, and repairing it was cheaper than anything else I could do. I ended up driving it for years, and I actually miss that car to this day. I wish I still had it, but for various practical reasons, one of which was the digital dash falling apart, literally the displays just started to not work. <clears throat> but it was cool while it lasted. Anyway, so I had to get this car fixed, um, and I had to pay off my loan, and I thought it was really unfair, and I asked all these questions, and I learned about gap insurance, and I learned that there's nothing you can do. And I was basically told by everything and everyone, internet, people, whatever, that there's nothing that can be done. The insurance doesn't cover your loan, it covers the car, and that's it. So I got screwed pretty good for thousands of dollars uh, fairly early on in my adulthood. It wouldn't be the last time I'd get screwed for thousands of dollars, but um, it was nearly the last time. Anyway, that was a hard lesson for me. I didn't know that that was a thing, and it actually really made me a lot more careful about getting an auto loan, because now I knew that if something bad happened, I would be stuck with the difference. What am I supposed to do? I mean, 
I wouldn't be able to take out any more loans or get any more credit if I defaulted on the difference. A lot of people are like, oh, I don't own the car. Why would I pay for it? Well, you, that's not how finance works. <clears throat> that's not how usury works. That's not how slavery through debt works. You have to pay for it. You don't have a choice. And if you think you have a choice, you're wrong. <laughs> and you'll find out whenever they come after you. One way or the other, they'll come after you. But I owned that car free and clear for years. And the only reason I got rid of it is <clears throat> myself and my ex-wife didn't make nearly enough money. When we did make money, we spent it poorly. And uh, I ended up not having enough money by the time we, you know, struck out on our own um, to even really repair it. Like, it needed CV axles, something I didn't know how to do. Just all kinds of stuff. And by then... Um, I was actually looking at getting another vehicle. So, yeah, it just, everything compounded to where I had to get rid of it. And sometimes you do have to just cut your losses and say, look, it's not worth putting more money into this thing when I could put that money into something where the money will last longer. Lots of hard lessons learned in my youth about cars and finance. Um, didn't get a credit card until the late 2000s, so I didn't fall into that hole until much later. Um, not fun, but, you know, still a better experience than losing $3,000 in an instant because of someone else turning in front of me. And what was I supposed to do? You know, you're gonna go, you're gonna go sue the old lady? There's a good chance you'd spend more trying to go after her. And uh, what's she going to do? Like, she probably doesn't have a bunch of money. She was driving a Chevy Venture, for God's sake. I'm not going to get the three grand out of her. I might have, but I don't know. You know, early 20s, not likely. Not likely going to happen. Not the kind of thing I knew how to do. Um, and later in my life, I would meet people who I would talk to about things like that. It's like, here's the time I got screwed over, and here's the time I got screwed over, blah, blah, blah. And they and they told me things like, um, they would say things like, oh, well, if that was, uh, if it was me, then I would be calling my lawyer. And I'm like, have you just never been poor? Have you just never not had money? I mean, have, have you, have you ever in your life not had connections and finances? Do you not understand what it's like? You... If you're a, a, a friggin' lower middle class or lower class normie, you cannot just go out there and be like, oh, hey, lawyer friend, um, help me with this person that I need to get money out of. You, it's, what the, what could, man, I swear to God, some of these people are so delusional, they just don't understand that not everybody is them. Not everybody has all of the capabilities that they have. And especially when you're young, you don't have the knowledge. If nothing else, you don't understand everything the way that they do. This this friggin' 40, 50 year old guy working like um, some kind of a site security position or something at some lab. It's like, if, if I had that problem, I'd just call up my lawyer friend. Oh, good for you. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll just get right on that. I'll just call up all my lawyer buddies that I have at Pizza Hut. I'll just call up all the lawyer friends that will definitely want to, you know, give me, um, that, that'll want to write letters for me for free because I'm their buddies or uh, that know that I have thousands of dollars in my back pocket and can gladly pay them whatever they want, you know, or I do them favors or whatever. Anywho, I don't even know how this, this got off you know, how we switched over from me telling you about gap insurance to this crap. But just, there's so many stupid things in this world that you learn about the hard way. And, you know, it, one of the biggest problems that you'll find in life is that you cannot, you cannot get the answer to something if you don't even know that the question exists. And that is how I felt about a lot of things growing up. I always felt like I was being jumped on by something. And I, I honestly kind of have to fault my parents in that regard, at least, because either they knew and didn't tell me that these things were things, or they 
didn't know, and what am I, what are they supposed to do? But <clears throat> either way, I was ill prepared for all these events that happened in my life, and it set me back thousands of dollars and uh, made me feel really bad when I found out that oh well the problem is that I just need to call the lawyer friend I don't have, you know, get them to drag the money out of them. That actually reminds me of a story um, decades ago, like even before I married my crazy ex-wife. Said ex-wife told me a story. There was a, a lawyer in town whose daughter drunk drove, uh, blazed across some railroad tracks, like went flying across some railroad tracks, and landed right in the side of a car of a family killing them, or most of them, I can't remember. Somebody died, okay? Drunk driving daughter, <coughs> uh, somebody died. It could have been one person, could have been a family. The details don't matter. What matters is what I was told the guy did next. What the lawyer guy did was he sued. After managing to get his daughter to not suffer the consequences of her drunk driving legally, um, he then tried to sue the family of the people who died. Or I, I don't remember, so it couldn't have been the whole family died, but I think the driver of the car or whatever for like being there. And the judge like immediately tossed it going, I can't believe that you filed this. But the point is the guy did. And so my understanding if I'm to understand this guy telling me, I'll just, you know, I would just call up my lawyer buddy. My understanding is that the way I need to live life according to these people, these rich, snooty, connected people, is I need to be the kind of person who, if my kid does something bad, not only do I prevent them from suffering legal consequences, which make no mistake, I actually would prevent my kid from suffering the legal consequences. That wouldn't mean there wouldn't be consequences. It just mean that the consequences, um, I would not strap a child of mine with a criminal record unnecessarily. You know what I mean? But after doing that, I should be the kind of person, after protecting my kid, I should be the kind of person who then tries to go after the people that my kid did harm to for money try to go after them to get stuff out of them for inconveniencing my child. That's that's the kind of person I should be. Okay. I don't know. What do you think? What do you think about this? Because I think that's stupid. I think that that is grossly immoral. And I'm not saying that the guy who said, oh, just call up a lawyer, buddy, that, that that's the way that they are necessarily... But I smell a sort of link. There's there's sort of a trend, an, an attitude. Like, oh, well, if I have any kind of problem that inconveniences me, then I'll just call up my lawyer and have him, sue, have him go after him. Like, okay, you can just sue anybody that gets in your way. Cool, okay. But the problem, I think, that I have with all that is that I can see it from the perspective of the kind of person, you know, me, who is more likely to be the victim of such a suit than the perpetrator of such a suit. I am more likely to be the person that some douchebag runs into while drunk driving and then tries to sue me for the having the audacity to not get, you know, to, to be in the way of the drunk driver. God almighty. I can't talk about this anymore. It's just that that just remembering that story pisses me off so much. I don't know. Should I? Should I be that way? Should I be such an immoral prick? Let me know in the comments. All right. Take it easy. I got to get off of here. I'm I'm just, just want to punch a baby in the nose right now. Good night. Take care.